Hey again everyone, David here. This time I'm going to be doing a video not on advanced squad leader, but basic squad leader. Specifically, Cross of Iron, as it says here, a squad leader game at. As a reminder, squad leader came out first in the late 70s and was followed up by three other uh, game ets. By the time the third one, GI Anvil of Victory, came out, the game design team uh, went back to square one and redesigned it and issued it as Advanced Squad Leader, which is still being produced today. That said, some people prefer the relative simplicity of Squad Leader even up to Cross of Iron or beyond. So today, under what I would say is a request, I want to talk about the rules involving uh, armored fighting vehicles. So the participants today, from left to right, we have a T-3476C. We have uh, an, a Russian infantry squad, and we have a German tank destroyer. Let's have a look at these counters, and I'll just explain a little bit better what they are and what it means. So here is a little bit closer look at the three counters. Again, on the left, we have the Soviet tank, a bunch of numbers and stuff on it. And on the right, we have what you can see is the Panzerjäger 3, or sorry, Panzerjäger 2M, uh, that's a German vehicle. Bunch of numbers. Let's look at the one on the left first. Upper right corner, we see the numeral 16. That is its movement point allowance. Coming down below that, we have two numerals. On the tank, we have plus one, and then we have a zero with a box around it. On the other side, we have a negative two and a negative four and a star. There is a white circle around the turret of the tank. Yes, a white circle around the turret of the tank on the left, and on the right, we see that it is open. Uh, coming to the lower left, we see the Soviet has 76L, German 75L, and on the lower right for the tank, we have a 4 uh, slash 2. What do these mean? So we talked about the, the movement point allowance is 16 for both. Uh, the two numerals below that, the first numeral, uh, indicates its frontal armor value. The second one, uh, with a plus sign being better and a negative being uh, worse. And below that, we have the T-34-76-0 <clears throat> on the side and rear. Uh, but there's a box around the uh, numeral. And what that indicates, I'll just uh, refer to the rules. My suspicions were confirmed. It's the same as it is in the advanced squad leader uh, rule book. A box around an armor factor means that the turret in that facing is superior to that of the hull. So in this case, if a side shot were to hit the turret of the T-34, then it would be a plus one to the to kill dice roll. So it's a, always a good thing. Now let's have a closer look at the, at the German tank, or sorry, tank destroyer. Looking at its numeral factors here, you can see that there's a star below the uh, numerals for the armor factor. Also have a closer look at the uh, the artist depiction of the, uh, the artistic depiction, excuse me, of the tank destroyer. You'll notice that it's mostly open, clear. This means it's open top. Also notice the lack of color at the rear of the target near the numeral or the letter F. This means that the rear is unarmored. That's what the star reminds you of. It is unarmored from the rear. Finally, it has a numeral 2 encircled above the 75L. The 75L is its caliber of its gun. The 2 means it has a rate of fire of 2. That means it can fire twice in the same uh, fire phase. So in short, this weapon, although it's uh, very lightly armored, it's very powerful, has a very good gun, and it's rapid firing. Now let's look at some hypothetical combat. It's Russia. Winter 1941. Here we see a Russian squad is set up in hex uniform 8. And if you remember the rules about the grain fields right here, they don't exist in winter. So it's considered to be the equivalent of open ground. Over here, far, far away and behind the wall, get behind there you, is the tank destroyer. We can see which way he is facing, and we're going to just take a, look, a better look from his point of view to show how the combat will take place. Here's our German gunner. He's all set up, and he, he's advanced up behind that wall, and he sees himself two, four, six, eight, nine hexes away down there. 
coming into focus now, is the Soviet squad. We can see that line of sight is clear. It's the German prep fire phase, and the German wants to take a shot. Let's set things up, and then we'll see if he makes a hit. When firing ordnance, so such as uh, the main gun of a tank or a mortar that's on board, you have to use the to hit table, shown here at 33.3. Very simple to use. First, look at the left to determine what your target is. In this case, we see it is infantry in woods. Now, cross-reference that to the right until you get to the column that uh, includes its range. It's nine hexes away, so we look at the column seven to 12. Infantry and woods, there's a six and another six. It doesn't really matter which number we use, but just remember the black, that's the German number, and the red is the Soviet number. Think of the red flag or red commies or whatever you want to think of. So basically, this gunner will have to uh, get six or fewer on two dice in order to hit the target, but we're not done yet. First thing we do is we check for any gun type modifications. For range and gun type, we know it's a 75L gun. We see the middle column is for those types of guns and we cross reference down to the range. It's only nine hexes away, it's a zero, so there is no modifier uh, for the gun type. Next, check the target modifications. That's on the lower. You can do it any order you want, but that's the way I'm doing it now. So for example, if the target were moving, concealed, uh, acquired, etc., and bound at size, then we would apply that. In this case, the target is not moving and is not concealed, so there are no target modifications. Next, let's look at the hit determination modifiers in terms of firer modifications. Again, you can do these in any order you wish, but here I just, I just went uh, from left to right, up to down, whatever. So these are cases alpha to India, and have a look through it. If it's firing outside its covered arc, etc., so forth, the tank has not moved. But look at the last one, buttoned up. As stated, this is an open-top vehicle. It is never buttoned up when it fires. A tank that is buttoned up is penalized by having a plus one added to it to hit dice roll modifier. So noting that there are no further dice roll modifiers, it's time to roll the dice. The first die roll was a seven. Remember, I needed a six. Also note that I put the prep fire marker next to the tank destroyer. He fired, the shot was close, but he missed. We are not using the near miss rules. But before I carry on, I want to talk a little bit about target acquisition. The thing to remember with target acquisition is that if an ordnance weapon is firing at a target and misses or doesn't destroy it, then they will gain an acquisition of a negative one DRM that can apply. Here's the thing. It must be applied at the end of the fire phase, of that unit's fire phase. This weapon has two shots to make. It fired, it missed, it does not get the acquisition yet. You can't apply it yet, but we'll note that and we'll apply it after the second die is, mod is rolled. The cutter was better on the second roll and he rolled a four. We know that four is less than six and therefore he got a hit on the target. Now, how do we resolve this? Let's have a look. Any ordnance hit against a gun or infantry or such target uh, is resolved on the infantry fire table. And what you do is simply, instead of looking at the black numerals across the top, is you look for the red. We know it's a 75. We look for 75. It's not there. So we keep going down to the next lower number, and we see that there's a 70 here that coincides with a 12. So therefore, it's basically an IFT 12 attack with a DRM of plus one for the woods. I'll roll that now and apply the result. The gunner scored a good hit. Rolled a four, DRM plus one makes it a five, and on the 12 column you can follow along from home, is a two. So that unit now has to take a morale check, DRM plus two. We'll do that now. Bad news for the squad, they rolled a seven, Plus two is nine. That exceeds their morale, so therefore they are broken, placed under desperation morale, and then finally a minus one acquisition is placed on its hex. We'll do that now. Now we're going to talk about vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle combat. This T-34 tank commander has realized that he's heard some shooting from up ahead, some screams and shouts of his fellow countrymen. He's coming to the rescue. 
he's going to come on the board and try to take out that dastardly invader of the motherland. Let's roll through this and see what happens. It is, of course, the uh, Soviet turn. The uh, Soviet infantry, for whatever reason, chose not to route away. Didn't have to, but the tank has come on. And now he is uh, lining up against the uh, martyr, coming at it right from the front. Bold move. Now, the tank has come into play. He's moving, and the tank destroyer is going to shoot at him. He's going to shoot at him a bit early. Let's have a look from his angle, and we'll see why. Here's the view from the Germans. He's in a good position. He's behind a, uh, a wall, so he is hauled down. But I have to point out that the uh, Soviet came on uh, out of sight. He was here originally. It's not in the line of sight of the, of the gunner. Comes here for T7, moving. He sees him for one movement point. Comes here to U7, sees him for two movement points. Finally, here at a V6, he sees him for three movement points, and he's seven hexes away. At this time, the gunner's a little nervous, and he pulls the trigger, and he shoots. Let's see what all the dice roll modifiers are for him to hit the target. Throwing an L weapon, he's between seven and twelve hexes away. There are no modifiers for the gun type. Let's look at target modifiers. There are a few. Case J, the target is moving. That is a plus two. We keep coming over to target is uh, case uh, Papa pa or P. Moving target using three or less MPs in fire's line of sight. That's an extra plus one. So already a, a plus three to hit. Let's look at the fire modifications. The vehicle has not had to move out of its line of arc, hasn't had to pivot or anything. So we know that from A to India is nothing. So it's a negative, it's a net plus three to the hit modifiers. Let's see what his base number to hit is. The vehicle is in other, it's in the open. Between seven and 12 hexes away, seven hexes away. So it's a base to hit number of nine. Nine DRM plus three. Let's roll and see what happens. Rotten luck, he sco scored a seven. Seven plus three is 10, that's one too many. Now let's think about this. If that target were one hex closer, it would have been not a 9, but a 10 to hit. Also would have seen it for more than three movement points in its line of sight. That way, it would have only needed a DRM of plus 2. So the 7 would have hit had he waited. But the gunner was a bit jumpy and he fired off too soon. Let's carry on the movement. The Soviet crew is a little bit more experienced than the German. And they realize that the, to hit this target, they're not going to have a very good chance because one, they're buttoned up, two, they've moved, and three, the target is hauled down. If they stop here, that tank will shoot at them until they finally hit them. Also note that there is no uh, acquisition target onto the, the vehicle yet. Remember, it's not the end of that vehicle's, or sorry, the tank's, tank destroyer's fire phase. He keeps moving. Soviet tank went around the woods to the front, breaking line of sight with the Panzer Jaeger, so he's no longer eligible to be acquired. And he's come around to within two hexes, facing into the side of the Panzer Jaeger. Remembering that the Panzer Jaeger has a rate of fire of two, that crew commander decides to take a shot. He's going to pivot the vehicle, and let's see what happens. 